Jesus. 
Oh 
in his house.
to be filled your peace just come worship the Lord get into that river this morning it's not promised tomorrow hallelujah I'll provide the sacrifice you provide the spirit
provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. Somebody pray right now. Feel me, Lord. God, feel me. Let my cup runneth over. that sacrifice. I'll provide the sacrifice no different than Elijah's day he cut that bull up and he laid it on the altar then he prayed just a simple prayer Lord I provided you the sacrifice what he was saying it was Lord I am the sacrifice do with me whatever you will Lord as long as the fire and the power of God would fall and consume me. I'll provide the sacrifice. Lord, I know the altar doesn't fit the sacrifice. The so sacrifice has got to fit the altar. He is our provider. The way maker. The need meter. And you're the only person can stop your blessing. The person standing beside you can't stop you. The devil can't stop you. You would just lay your life in the hands of Christ as a sacrifice. Pleasing unto the Lord. He will provide the fire. That's simply the consuming power of God. As you just stand there. Sacrifice well pleasing unto the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sometimes before the Lord can do something through you, He's got to do some things in you. He's trying to teach us to submit. And trust. But if you're not willing to do your part, God just simply holds that fire back till He looks down and sees that sacrifice pleasing. And then that all-consuming fire. Hallelujah. Most of you are sitting back there receiving 
a blessing because you feel his presence but you put me in remind, remembrance of I've got this tub out at my dog pen that I turn a valve and it supplies the water to that tub But one thing I've learned, I can fill it up and turn it off. But the stuff, the debris that's in that tub still remains there. It just brings it to the top. But when I leave that vial alone and just kind of prop up or go do something for a while and come back, uh, you see, for that water fills that tub and overruns the debris on the side. Come on, somebody. And by just simply responding, just saying, Lord, I am... I want to be your sacrifice. I want you to feel me, not only to bring it to the top, but to go ahead and remove it out of my life. Come on, somebody. Glory, fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Let it overflow. Let it run out. Glory to God. I want to run Come on, worship him in this house.
with your presence so divine so full let nothing that's not like you remain oh God we your hands and voices to the Lord one more time this morning and now begin to thank him for what he's done begin to th praise him for filling you with his presence hallelujah but greater than that thank you for going down into that place in your heart that's been festered or hurting the spirit of joy been absent for a while Come on, give him praise in this house. becomes a purging he don't feel you just to make you feel good he feels you to rid you of that thing that's held you back from your promise that's hindered your progress that's blinded your sight that stopped your ears that's what he feels you for you lay yourself down as a sacrifice, and I guarantee you, he'll provide the fire. Glory to God. Somebody pray as she sings this a little more. Lord, pray. 
purge me from anything that's not like you. Yes, Hallelujah. Purge me. Hallelujah. It ain't got to be bondage. And it don't have to be some heinous something. It could just be the simple lack of trust and faith that you put in the Lord. You might be here this morning without any kind of hang-ups and bondages that people around you could see, but you might just have the lack of joy in your heart. And that devil's tried everything he could do to keep you from smiling and laughing again. But I believe somebody just needs to hear this, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, friend. I believe somebody's morning is fixed. Their... I believe somebody's got their morning. I believe there's a morning here for somebody. Glory to God. feels like you're going to leave here better than you came. You're not, listen to me, you're not responsible for making sure everything is so tidied up at that, at that altar of sacrifice that he's not asking you to cross your T's and dot your I's. He's just asking you to be real with him. Lay yourself down and don't, and, and, and don't worry about the sizes and the dimensions or the way it looks or the way it sounds. Uh, I want to tell you sometimes the greatest breakthrough you can have is driving by yourself uh, and just simply roll the window down and begin to shout glory. Come on, somebody. This thing of image that this world tells us some the mold we gotta fit into. Just lay yourself down at the foot of the cross and be willing not to hide and be willing not to hold back anything from God. Because watch this, and this might sting, but this is gospel. God, God's spirit does not operate because of pity. God's Spirit operates through compassion. And at times we get to feeling pretty pitiful for ourselves. And isn't it amazing at times? If we're not careful, we begin to try to govern our whole surroundings by pity. Missing the whole merit of compassion. I don't do something because... Of a person's pity, we do something because of we're compassionate and have the compassion of Jesus. I know you know this already, but there's some might be around you that don't know it, and even the devil telling you you was out of line, but you was right in the will of God this morning. I was fixing a call for an altar and say, Why are you still back there? And the Lord said, No, just be still a minute. Come on, somebody. Just be still a minute. He said, because there's some here that's been on the altar of sacrifice. And God spoke to you to do that. You've never, I've been here years. I've never seen you do nothing like that. You know why? Because God ain't never told you nothing like that. Come on, somebody. But God done that, glory to God, to get you to make that step. Because you got to understand, and not only you, but a lot of you got to understand, God sees way more in you than you see in yourself. Come on now. 
glory to God. And if you will just present the sacrifice. Paul said in the book of Romans, holy, acceptable. And then he says this, it's a reasonable service that you do these things. That you yield yourselves to God. Amen. He will always send the fire. Glory to God. I'm not going to preach. I, I just feel like the Holy Ghost has already done a great job at that this morning. And through the few little things, the few little things that, that, that He's just spoke through me to, to, to share with you. Man, I, I, I just, I, I'm always looking, Brother Russell. I'm always listening. And the things I do in my everyday life, I know that God will try to teach us some things. Just like that, that, big bucket of water out there just turn it on and just watch well I didn't know all that was in that big old it was one of those big feed things I didn't brother Larry I didn't know I was just expecting water to come out of there but all of a sudden there's leaves start floating to the top and because the water pressure the, the, the weight of the water is pushing all the stuff that's lighter out of the way come on somebody you do know the Holy Ghost is a type of the river of the Spirit of God right? Glory to God I'm going to preach not this morning but tonight Wednesday night if the Lord allows me on, on that thought you know about the substance getting full of the right substance of God you know the greatest product on the market today of deception and disappointment is a bag of potato chips. Especially that little family pack when they, when they got them little bags and they've got them babies blowed up so tight that you, when you reach and get the, one of those and, mm, glory, and, and when you bust that baby open all the air escapes and there's three potato chips in that bag. You don't believe me next time you shop and you go by the tater chip aisle, you just stop and say, well, let me see if that preacher knows what. And you pick them up and they're full and tight. They got a substance in them. But it's called air. And at times that's all you and I has got a bunch of hot air. Come on. But glory to God, if we would just allow God to fill us. You bust that bag of, of, of Lay's barbecue open. And it, it's like they all disappear to the, the very... I guarantee you they could have put 50 more potato chips in that bag. Come on. But they deceiving. They put nothing but air in that thing. I don't want to be just full of air. Come on. I want to have the word and the substance of God. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. I'm going to stop before I break open that black folder right there. Glory to God. And I've had a fire burning in me. I was privileged to get to go see uh, our children and grandchildren in Kentucky. I had in my spirit a thought, and I brought it with me. And, and uh, Sunday morning come and went and didn't get an invitation for the pulpit, but I was just glad to be there. I got an invitation just to come and greet the congregation. So that's, that's what, listen, if you, listen, preachers, and I think we're all there. But if you, not, if you didn't just get an open-ended invitation and a mic in your hand to preach, if you dare to take up the offering, just take up the offering. Come on. I've been in a, I've, I've evangelized for years, Sister Harriet. I went into these places where the pastor, I'm telling you, he had the microphone super glued in his hand. Come on, man. You call me for revival. Give it to me, huh? But I just went up there and greeted the church and, and just thanked the Lord, that, that, you know, for them uh, helping watch over our family so far from home. And uh, But uh, I, I want to tell you, I had a word from the Lord up there. And, it didn't come to pass, but that's all right. I got to be fed, Brother Russell, because the old preacher needs to be fed sometimes, and I thank the Lord for that. So, uh, but uh, I, I got during that service, God spoke to me about this church, and uh, and we're gonna, yeah. But preacher, I'm not gonna be back to next Sunday morning. Well, I, I I'm gonna have to preach between now and Sunday morning. So, and, and it's not gonna be this morning. So, I just don't feel like. I don't, I mean, I love to preach. I hadn't preached, and it feels like a stinking month now, maybe a year, huh? But I've sure preached a lot to Sister Teresa this last week. Amen. And, and, and she didn't give me a lot of amens, so I don't know. But, but we were so wrapped up with those grandchildren. We just want to especially thank y'all for your prayers and for the love we felt when we come back home.
Glory to God. We speak very highly of you. Amen. And we so appreciate you, uh, as a house of the Lord. But again, I'm serious about this. Look around. There's been some not been able to be here or not.